Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of How to Play Minecraft Survival with me, Throlash. Now today we are going to finally go around and we're going to go do a bit of caving. Hopefully we'll be able to find some iron because I'm really sick of these stone tools. I need some armor for sure. Uh, iron is just a really super resource and I'd like to find as much of it as we can. And I'd like to hopefully see some of the new caves, get on top of that mountain behind us maybe, and uh, maybe see some other mountains some some more 118 generation who knows um i'd also like to do a little bit of storage before we go caving and for those of you with a keen eye right above my shoulder i want to show you how our cows and our new pigs are doing so let's jump right into it Now, before we go and check on our piggies, uh, storage. <laughs> storage has become a major issue. So in this episode, I think what we're going to do is we're going to create a storage area. And storage areas are very important in early game especially. Being organized in this game is extremely, extremely important. And if you ever watch any of my Twitch uh, live streams, you would understand what I mean because I'm not organized in my current world on Twitch. And it's painful for me and it's painful for viewers. You should really be organized. So today we're going to build a little storage room. I think we're going to put it in the basement of this igloo here. That's right. We're going to dig out a basement um, and then just fill it with chests and put everything where it's supposed to go. And over here we have a little bit of a treat, a poisonous potato. Now we'll get to the potato in just a second. And the reason I have that potato is actually... The reason I have these pigs, um, we went out uh, off camera, excuse me, I went out off camera and uh, I grabbed a couple of pigs from over that way where we found our original cows, oh geez, in our first or second episode. Um, pigs are a I'm not sure what those two are doing, <laughs> sumo wrestling maybe? Pigs are attracted by a number of vegetables, uh, carrots, potatoes, and beetroots. And we got potatoes from that village that we uh, went and visited the other day. And as I said, I've been doing a little bit of AFKing, not really AFKing, just watching our vegetables and our cows grow up. Um, there was, for those of you who missed, a ton of cows in our, in our cow pen. And I've also been growing potatoes. Now this is a fully grown potato plant. Some of you might get confused because potato plants look very full grown when they're not. <laughs> it's a little difficult. There's a clear distinction between a fully grown and not uh, wheat plant, but not so much with potatoes. When po when potatoes are almost as tall as a, as a full block, they are fully grown. And potatoes, as you just saw right there, have a chance to give you a poisonous potato. Now, Mojang being the ultimate trolls that they are, have put an item in this game that is 100% completely useless. The poisonous potato cannot be eaten. I think, actually, if you do eat it, it gives you poison. Um, you can't use it in brewing. Um, it, it, it can't be composted. It is literally useless. <laughs> But the great thing about potatoes in this game is, unlike wheat, potatoes, when you break a fully grown potato plant, will give you anywhere between one and five potatoes, which is fantastic because you can not only get more potatoes in order to easily, excuse me, more easily um, breed up pigs, you can also cook potatoes in a... In a furnace, I don't believe you can do it on a fire, but we'll give it a shot right now because I'm starting to think you might actually be able to. Uh, potatoes just have a very, very wide variety of uses. And the more potatoes you get, obviously, the easier it is to breed animals because right now I have 43. I don't remember how many I started with, but it wasn't too many as opposed to my seven wheat. So it's super easy to farm pi pigs with potatoes. So some of you might be thinking, why Thrillash then did you start with cows? Now I said last episode, uh, cows are very useful because they also drop leather. And leather is very useful uh, in, in 117 and 118 because of powdered snow. So powdered snow is a new snow block where you can actually sink down into it and freeze to death. Uh, so if you get leather boots, which you can uh, use leather to craft, you won't sink into the powder snow. And I believe also with leather, you won't freeze to death either. And the other thing with leather is bookshelves. Now, books are super, super helpful, especially when you're going to enchant, like I said uh, in the last episode. 
But the best thing about breeding pigs is pork chops have the same hunger bar and saturation replenishing power as steak does. So it's the same as steak, it just doesn't give you any leather. But I find pigs a little easier to farm because they'll eat pretty much any vegetable and potatoes are super easy to harvest. And I almost forgot real quick before we move on to our storage issue. Oh, you can place potatoes on a campfire. That's good to know. So a baked potato isn't really a bad food item to start out the game with if you don't have access to pigs or cows readily available. Uh, they restore two and a half little hunger haunches and about six saturations. So you're going to have to eat again really soon after eating a baked potato. Um, to compare this, steak and Cooked pork chops will restore four hunger haunches and give you, I believe it's about 20, excuse me, 12. It'll give you 12 uh, saturation points restored, not 20, jeepers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to storage. Now, we have a chest here, right, that we've got just chock full of stuff, and my whole inventory is chock full of stuff. I even have some extra chests that we uh, pilfered from the village before. Um, what we really want to have happen is we need an entire area just for storage right um there's a lot of ways that you can do this uh one thing that i was considering is we could just dig underneath this igloo right here put in like a basement le level and then just fill it full of chests okay um something i do want to show you here is if you place a chest next to another chest it will make a double chest okay and when i go ahead and open this we now have two entire chests it's called large large chests um two entire chests just connected to each other essentially so you can make large areas of of storage um just by using two chests right next to each other now like i said ideally we kind of want our own area for storage here and you can kind of see that this place is a mess <laughs> over here i took down a little bit of uh, dirt and i put it over here and I also got rid of a lot of the snow layer that was here. And we're going to, I have this crazy idea to just make like a small little igloo village. And we're going to make an igloo right here, uh, kind of a larger igloo, uh, that is a storage area. And I'm going to go ahead and try to build this thing in the form of a time lapse. Hopefully everything works out and we'll see you all after that's done.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and I really hope you enjoyed that time lapse. It was uh, a lot of fun to make, and it was a little more difficult than I thought it was going to. But uh, we got it done, and you can see our beautiful little igloo behind us. Um, you'll also see I have a fancy new pick, a shield, and some boots. I recorded probably a good 15 minutes of, of caving content, and uh, turns out my microphone was muted, so... I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this stuff inside, and we'll put it away, and uh, we're going to pretend that we never went caving. Um, actually, let me put this stuff up here. See, I even got myself a nice fancy uh, crossbow as well. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to pretend that never happened, but welcome to our storage area. It's really not much, but that's okay. Eventually, we'll get a piece of glass in here that's um, e either that or... No, we can't put ice there because it's next to the torch but uh, we'll get a piece of glass there that's blue that looks like ice but yeah this is our this is our storage area now there are ways you can make this a little bit better what you can do if I can find my there we go some leather here uh, what I can do is I can go ahead and make some sticks there we go eight sticks acquired and now what I can do is make an item frame so eight sticks with a piece of leather in the center and what this is going to allow us to do is if we shift click shift excuse me and then right click on the side of the chest we can actually label this chest uh, so we know what's inside of it here so what i'll do is i'll put this little piece of spruce in there and you can if you right click on these rotate the item um, and it gives you just enough room so that you can click on kind of the corner of the chest here but now we know that there's spruce wood in here eventually when we get more leather i'll go ahead and label every single one of these chests right so we've got uh spruce wood whoops and this happens a lot <laughs> spruce wood we've got oak wood we've got uh birch and i left some room for the other wood types you know we've got our mob drops over here angry mob drops uh crops and uh, ED crops, etc., etc. We've got our, our valuables down here next to our workbench. So yeah, this is a, a great little starter storage area. But right now, what I want to do is get some caving done. Now, before you go caving, you're going to want to make sure that you take everything out of your inventory that you don't need in caves, because there's a very good chance that you could die in caves, right? Um, now, die when you die, you have an option to respawn. As, unless you're in hardcore. In hardcore, you only have one life. <laughs> but um, one of the best things to do before you go caving is to set your spawn. And the way you do that is you go up to your main bed, the bed that you don't ever get rid of, and you right click on it. And it'll say down in the bottom, you can only sleep at night or during thunderstorms. And then over in the bottom left, you see the respawn point set. So when we go caving, if I were to die and I click respawn, we would respawn inside of our igloo, right? So then I could come over here, go into our little storage igloo, grab some extra gear, and then go back to uh, wherever we were going caving. Now, I'm, I'm clicking that way because uh, we're going to go caving over there. Um, we went over here. There's not much for us, <laughs> honestly. You're not missing much. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to go back in here and we'll go caving. Now, things that I would take with me uh, on, on a caving adventure, especially the first time, is a crafting bench, a furnace, and a bunch of wood. Now, wood is, like I said, very necessary for a lot of things. We're probably going to go through a lot of pickaxes. We might go through some swords, but mainly we need torches. You can see I have a lot of torches here already. We are going to need more than this. We're just trying to make as, uh, take as many as we can. Bring an extra bed with you. If you go into a cave, like that big dark cave right there, and it looks super dangerous, what you can do is, in a pinch, you can go ahead and throw down your bed at the top of the cave, set your spawn, and then go in it. Make sure you keep the bed there. So if you were to die in that cave, you don't respawn all the way back here. You respawn at the mouth of the cave, right? And then you can just jump in, grab your stuff, and go about your merry way. You're going to want some blocks that you can just, you know, use to pillar up and down, etc. I bring dirt. You can bring cobble. It's up to you. Um, a boat. Now, boats are super, super useful when you're fighting mobs, uh, which sounds weird. It sounds like that shouldn't be the case, but um, I might be able to demonstrate with this rabbit if I'm quick enough. Nope, I'm not quick enough. So, uh, there are, there is a chance, excuse me, that uh, mobs will get stuck in boats, right? Um, so, as a mob, let's say, a, like a zombie or a creeper or an enderman is walking towards you, if you place a boat between it and you and they path over it, they will actually sit down into the boat. 
and they'll be stuck there. They can't actually get out of it unless you break the boat, right? So then you can just stand there and swing at them to your heart's content. Now, the other thing you're going to want is a door. You're going to want a lot of doors. Now, I have three here that I've made. Um, the big thing with doors is you can actually use doors, if I can get up here, there we go, to breathe underwater, which is a little cheaty and not exactly how Mojang designed them. However, um, it, it works. It works very well. <laughs> And uh, if we run into any pockets of water, I'll show you what that's like. But wow, we are ready. Look at this beautiful generation. We've got here what's known as dripstone. Now, if we go ahead and mine this, we will get pointed dripstone, okay? And you can use this to decorate with. You can put it uh, as a stalagmite down here on the bottom of something. Or you can have it hanging off of something where it will be a stalactite, right? Now, if something were to fall onto this dripstone, let's see if I can do this here. It hurts, see? Now, if you have something fall from a great height, oh, hey, creeper, um, from a great height, uh, it could actually kill the mob just from falling down onto the dripstone. And we've got our first mob here that's not a zombie. Now, creepers are not undead, so they're not going to die in the sun, but they will explode and break blocks around you and most likely kill you. <laughs> creepers are very notorious at killing underprepared players. Now, the best way to deal with them is just what I did, sprint at them and swipe. And what sprinting does is it will make them knock back a bit, right? And they'll get away from you. Uh, push comes to shove, just run away. Now, over here is what we're really looking for here in our caving adventure. We need iron. Now, always check behind you before you start digging. Ideally, we would like to start out with at least one piece of iron. This four right here is perfect because what this will allow us to do is make a shield and an iron pickaxe. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to light up as you go. Now, here's a perfect example for me to show you the boat trick. If I put this... Whoa! Got a little too close there. If I put that boat down, see, he is just chilling in the boat now. And the sun is over his head, so now he's burning up. And we can just sit here and kill him. Oh, perfect. Look at this. We are seeing all the different types of mobs. Over here, we have ourselves a zombie villager. Now, if villagers are killed by zombies, they will turn into a zombie villager, right? And they are pretty much no different from a zombie, except for the fact that you can cure them and turn them into regular villagers again. We're nowhere near that, so we're just going to go ahead and take these guys out. Oh, and this uh, zombie decided to drop us an iron ingot, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, that's super luck that we got ourselves an iron ingot. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop down our crafting table and make some planks. I believe we need eight. Uh, seven or eight planks for a shield and I'll go ahead and make myself a shield here now shields go in your offhand and on bedrock in order to use a shield you're gonna have to crouch but on Java you use the right mouse button and what that will do is it will block any incoming attack Now the greatest use for a shield let's see if I can find that creeper here we go is it will completely block creeper explosions so if we can get this guy to look at us come down over here ready we took no damage whatsoever, so shields, unbelievably useful in the early game. And it looks like it's getting nighttime, so we're going to go ahead and take a sleep. Look at this guy up here. Look at where this guy spawned. <laughs> Poor freaking guy. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go caving, right? I'm just going to wander around through here. Uh, this is one of the new 1.18 generations. Whoa, where'd he go? Um... And I'm just going to pick up as many resources as I can. I want coal. I want iron. Um, I'd like to not die. <laughs> I think that would be helpful. Um, I might actually drop a bed and set my spawn um, up outside of this cave. Because, as you can see, it is kind of riddled with mobs at the moment. Um, yeah, I think I think we are going to do that. Let's, uh, let's come up here. Um, oh, I think my bed is still up here, actually. Yes, we're going to plop our bed in this little nook right here. We'll light up a little bit around it just in case we die and it's nighttime and mobs decided to spawn. Um, I know the daylight is here right now, but uh, yeah, it's always a good idea to just 
spawn proof everything that you can and uh, I think I'm going to start cooking up some of this iron here now I know we only have four bits of iron at the moment right there I did find some over this way all right that's eight bits so what we're looking for in caves is we're looking for iron mainly coal is nice uh, if you want to grab some copper that's a great idea too pretty much any ore that you see around you're going to want to pick that up Right? If you're in a big old cave like this, uh, I think the best bet is to just take one section at a time. Just kind of like, you know, make, sh make sure you know what's around you, uh, like the, the skeleton over here, and just start lighting up sections. Now, your shield is what really comes in handy against skeletons, because it can block arrows. And then after you block an arrow, you can just swipe at it with your sword, like so. Perfect. But yeah, just make sure you lighten up uh, sections around you, because the last thing you want to do is move away from an area and turn around and find out there is now a creeper there behind you, because you didn't light it up, right? So you're looking for iron is kind of your main resource uh, at the beginning of, of a world. Um, the other thing, uh, like I said, copper is usually all over the place. Coal is always, always, always a useful resource. Uh, I would stay away from lava as much as you can because you will burn up in there and die. And if you die in lava, you will most likely lose all of your stuff. And once you've got some iron, you know, we've got that eight that just cooked up here. One of the first things you're going to want to make uh, besides a shield is an iron pickaxe, okay? Now, what an iron pickaxe does is it will allow you to mine a lot more than the stone pickaxe because it has more durability. Plus, there are some ores that you can only mine with an iron pick right or or higher uh, a stone pick will just destroy the block as opposed to giving you something useful and now the other thing we can use with this five iron is i'm gonna go ahead and make myself a helmet now a helmet is a piece of armor and uh, it goes in the helmet slot up here the head slot up at the top there and when i go ahead and put that on right above my hearts you see that i have uh, a little iron chest plate there right uh, the more iron that you have on, the less damage you will take from mob attacks. So it's good to get a full set of iron armor when you're first starting out. Now, the tools... So, all in all, <laughs> with your shield, with a pickaxe, with full iron armor, that's going to be roughly, I think, about 30 pieces of iron. It's going to be 28 pieces of iron total just for the pick, the shield, and a full suit of iron armor, right? Uh that's 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 a lot of iron <laughs> um so you're gonna you're gonna need to find a lot of it now they've changed the ore distribution in this game for 1.18 and i have a picture that i'll go ahead and put up on the screen here and if i remember i will try my darndest to remember i will also put it in a google drive and i will whoops Go ahead and link that in the video description down below so anyone can just click on the the large file and you'll be able to see it in its beautiful majesty now this chart is a lot to take in right a, like a lot to take in um essentially what we're really focusing on is the big white triangles in the white bar okay so those are iron distribution and that just shows you where iron is going to spawn in your minecraft world now the big iron triangle sort of thing up at the top that is gonna be any iron that spawns above y level 80 in your world okay now how do you find out where you are in a world sea level so anywhere you see an ocean is around y level 65 okay so if you go up what is it 15 blocks from there you should find yourself at Y level 80. Now, if you're in Java Edition Minecraft, I don't believe this works in Bedrock Edition, um, you can hit the F3 button on your keyboard and it will show you your coordinates. I'll go ahead and do that just a second once I light up some more of this cave. And F3, perfect. Now, as you can see here, if you follow my cursor, over here we have block, right? So we are in block negative 20, 44, negative 342, all right, X, Y, and Z. Now, X and Y are the coordinates that go, um, are the coordinates that go east and west. So if you go east, you go positive X, and if you go west, you go negative X, okay? And then obviously Z is if you're going north and south, right? If you go south, you're going positive Z, and if you go north, you go negative Z, okay? 
y is your up and down coordinate. So if you go up in your world, your y coordinate will go up. If you go down in your world, your y coordinate will go down. Hello, Mr. Spider. Let me uh, take you out of here. Perfect. Uh-oh. We are out of a sword. I'll have to go ahead and make ourselves a new sword in here in a second. Now, as you can see on our chart, anything Y level 80 and above is going to spawn a lot of iron. Now, the thicker the triangle, the more things will spawn, okay? So Y down in Y level, or excuse me, how come, <laughs> it gets a little confusing when you use the same letter, uh, how come in Y level, um, what were we at, 40 some odd, we were still finding iron? Well, as you can see, there is a thin uh, white bar that is up near Y level 64, maybe 72, somewhere around there. Uh, that says that there is going to be consistently a small amount of iron that spawns uh, anywhere between Y level 72 and negative 64, which is the bottom of the world, right? And then you see all those squiggly bits on there of white. Uh, those are veins, okay? So those are going to be gigantic uh, veins of of ore that distribute all around the place. It's I haven't seen one of them before, but they sound really magnificent, and I'd love to find one. And it's just going to be a ton of different ore, um, as iron, excuse me, that's going to just like a huge vein essentially that goes through the earth. It'll look really neat. So following that ore distribution chart, we should be able to find iron anywhere between Y80 and above or Y72 and down with our highest chance Y80 and above. However, I, I, I really like to cave. <laughs> I like to, to go through, look at the new cave generation. I like going underground and finding whatever type of ores we can find. Plus, you see that light blue down at the bottom, those are diamonds and diamonds are a million times better than iron as far as uh, tools and armor, etc. So if we could find any of those the farther we go down in the world, even better. So in this F3 screen, what I would suggest you do is if you're going into a huge cave like this, just take a note of the coordinates for the, for the entrance, for the top, essentially. Uh, so what you can do on Java Editions, you can hit the F2 button and that'll save a screenshot. That's going to be in your Minecraft folder. Um, or you can just write it down in a piece of paper, entrance to cave. 16, 87, negative 336, right? So as you're hopping around, you can find your way back. And one last little bit of caving advice is if you find yourself in a cave like this, one of the old style where it's like narrow and windy, always put your torches on the left side as you're going in the cave. Because when you find the end of the cave, right? And you go ahead and turn around and want to find your way back out. Let me actually replace this guy over here. And uh, we'll put this guy here. Um, when you want to find your way out, right, you come back through, you're going to follow the right way, right? Any torches on the right, that's the direction that you want to go, okay? Place your torches on the left so you can find the right way out. Well, at this point, I'm just going to do a bunch of caving. I'm going to gather up a whole ton of resources. Uh, I'm looking for iron. I'll take copper and coal where I can find it. And if I find anything else that's uh, fun or useful while I'm out and about picking things up, I'll uh, bring you back to it. Well, I've been at it for a few minutes and there's a couple other things that I thought about. I, I, I figured I would go over. Uh, first of all, my inventory is a mess right now. Now there's some things that I can take out of here like the snowballs I don't really need. Um, I'm gonna keep the string because we'll need that for later. Uh, and there's a couple other things that we can clean up right now. I left my crafting bench up at the top, so we're gonna go ahead and make a new one of those and place that down. And as you can see here, we have two new blocks, right? That we can make three, actually. We have a block of coal. I gotta watch out for that zombie. Uh, a block of raw copper and a block of raw iron. Now I'm gonna hold down my shift key and click on the raw copper block. And what that's gonna do is condense all of that copper down into 27 blocks of copper, right? I still have six left over. And the recipe for that was, again, nine pieces of raw copper, okay? And the same is gonna be for iron as well. I can go ahead and turn uh, nine pieces of iron into raw iron, right? And what it does is it just condenses my inventory down a little bit. However, I am gonna take uh, pretty much all that iron out. I'm gonna make myself a furnace and I'm gonna cook all of this. And the reason I'm gonna cook all of this is because I wanna finish out my um, iron armor, and I'd also like to keep this iron pickaxe. Now, as you can see down at the bottom of the little uh, screen there for the iron pickaxe, I have durability 1 out of 250. So if I were to mine one more thing, this would break. But I want to keep it uh, kind of as a memento, our first iron pick. Um, I have our first 
uh, ever made pick. I think it was our our wooden pickaxe um, back at the house. Uh, so yeah, I want to I want to keep this pickaxe. We're gonna hang on to that uh, forever. I'll just go ahead and make a new one real quick. But you know that's kind of adding to our inventory problem. But I I think it's worth it. So when do you stop caving? Uh, kind of sort of up to you really <laughs> whenever you feel like stopping now i could go through this entire place light the whole thing up draw out every single resource uh and then be good there right um i don't really have the time unfortunately for that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cave until i have every single tool that i want uh as iron and also i want enough iron to make at least two buckets now buckets are something that we're going to go over probably in the next episode ouch they are super useful tools uh, that we can use for a variety of things. But uh, I'm going to keep on caving, and I'll come back when we are back at the igloo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we made it home. We survived. We survived our first caving session. Look at all these fancy iron tools we have. We got full iron armor and two buckets, too, which we will go over in the next episode. Now, I have to clean out my pockets I, I got a lot of stuff in the old inventory here, so I'm going to go do that between episodes, and in episode 5, we will go ahead and go exploring and see what else is out there in this world. I need some more wood types, etc., etc., and I want to see what kind of new 1.18 generation we have besides these beautiful mountains behind us, right? So until then, folks, my name is Throlash. Make sure to follow me on Twitter as well as Twitch, twitch.tv slash throlashgaming. Subscribe if you're new here so you can keep up to date with this series, and we will see you in the next episode. Goodbye!